rise. And for our worship this morning, we follow the order of Matthew G, which begins on page 32 in the front part of the Red Hymnal. O Lord, open thou my lips. Chapter 
2, beginning at verse 1. First of all, then, I urge with that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good and is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire then that in every place men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Likewise, also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel, with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearl or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived. But the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Holy Gospel appointed for this day comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 16, beginning with verse 1. This also serves as the basis for our sermon this morning. Jesus also said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about to you? Turn in the account of your management, for you can no longer be managing. And the manager said to himself, What shall I do, since my master is taking the management away from me? I am not strong enough to dig. And I'm ashamed to beg. I've decided what to do, so that when I am removed from management, people may receive me into their houses. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? He said, A hundred measures of oil. He said to him, Take your bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, How much do you owe? He said, A hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and write me. The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much, and one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all these things, and they ridiculed him. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Here ends our Gospel reading. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. And 
and not surprise them there. We see any children coming forward. Uh, most of the kids are now coming to the second service because there is Sunday school during that time after the children's service. So, seeing no children here this morning in the service, let us continue and serve them. dishonest in much. 
If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can two, serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. This is our text. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, you ever notice how many people talk about the need to carefully prepare for a secure retirement? Hardly a day goes by without hearing commercials about IRAs or some other financial tool to use for when you retire. We worry about how financially stable the social security system is and whether there will be benefits available when we retire. We invest in stocks and, and bonds, gold, and real estate. We make sure that we have the proper amount of life and, and health insurance. A lot of thought and concern <coughs> is given to planning for the future because as everyone knows, good investments equals a secure future. Yet how many people prepare as diligently for eternity? All the fuss is about finding a place in the sun for retirement. Yet people spend little or no effort preparing for what we will face once retirement is over. People make all their investments now as if this life were going to last forever. Yet the truth is your life in this world will end one day. Have you got a plan in place to deal with what you will face once your time in this life is over? In today's Gospel lesson, Jesus tells a parable about making wise investments. For each of us, there will come a time when we shall pass from this temporary life to eternity. The question Jesus raises is, what kind of spiritual retirement plan do you have? Now, if you are one of those people, like, like I am, I think, whose, whose head you know, starts spinning when financial advisors talk about all the various options for investments to ensure a stable retirement, relax. Jesus makes it abundantly simple in today's gospel lesson. There are two spiritual retirement plans to choose from. You either have the money plan or the gospel plan. Let's look at the money plan, shall we? If automatically you like the sound of the money plan, you are not alone. Indeed, the majority of people in our world are investing in this plan. In early translations, you might remember that the word used here was mammon, and it referred to anything or anyone in which we place all of our trust and confidence. Part of the reason why this plan is so popular is that there's just so much to choose from. It's like a buffet. Money can wear many masks and it can fit into any income bracket. Of course, some people, church people, will be quick to point out the verse, the Bible verse, Money is the root of all evil. Incidentally, the Bible verse actually says it's the love of money that is the root of all evil. In truth, though, the money plan is about more than just money. The money plan can be about possessions, power, prestige, popularity. Why can it be about people? People like family and friends, which on the surface seems to be reasonably good stuff. Let me make it clear. Anything that occupies the central, most important place in our life, in our heart, other than God, is the money plan. Now, despite its universal popularity, however, there's one drawback to the money plan. The drawback is this. It requires a lifetime of investment while offering nothing really in return. As a wise man once said, money is a lousy means of keeping score. 
The futility of riches is stated very plainly in two places, the Bible and the 1040 income tax form. Money is an elusive and tyrannical master. It always increases its demands upon us, yet never really gives us what it promises. It never gives us peace of mind. In fact, the more money you make, the less peace you seem to have. The same is true of security. The more money you got, the more problems seem to follow. Sad to say, those who put all of their investments in the money plan always end up bankrupt in the end, spiritually bankrupt for all eternity, consigned to the debtor's prison of hell. Now, as I said, most people worship money, and they invest their lives in the money plan. And let me say they are devout worshipers, giving up all, even the free gift of salvation, so they might devote their lives to the pursuit of money and all that it can buy, and that being their sole focus. That's why Jesus warns us in Matthew 16, 26, what good will it be for a man who gains the whole world? yet loses his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Now thankfully, as I said at the beginning of this message, there are two spiritual retirement plans. There's the money plan, and I think in some ways it's never been more popular. But there's another plan. That is the plan that God established in the Gospel. Whereas money's benefits are really nothing in the end, God's Gospel benefits are Priceless. First of all, there is forgiveness. There is the fact that the debt for all of our sins is redeemed by the suffering and death of Jesus Christ. Secondly, this, this plan comes with a membership, a membership in the family of God. Through baptism, we become God's own adopted children. We become the beneficiaries of all of his blessings. Thirdly, there are retirement benefits that are out of this world. There is the ironclad promise of everlasting life in our Father's house in heaven. In a mansion that Jesus says is prepared especially for us. All of this is ours through faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior, which is the only way to be covered by the gospel plan. Now I could go on and on extolling the virtues of this plan, but let me just highlight a few more of its benefits. Because you see, the beauty of this plan is that it begins immediately. And everyone qualifies, regardless of income or background, regardless of personal history. Right now we draw on its benefits, the, the benefit of, of prayer. To know that we can talk to our God and Father anytime any place, 24-7. There's also the benefit of God's presence and protection to know that he will be with us always, wherever we go, that we no longer have to be afraid. We no longer have to think of life as going it alone. And should you ever doubt the benefits of forgiveness, life, and salvation, well, there are regular reminders of all that God gives us through his word, and through the sacraments. So you have the two plans. The money plan and the gospel plan. Oh, and uh, I have to uh, make sure I emphasize one very important thing about these two plans. You see, you can only be covered by one of them. I'm very sorry, but you can't be covered on both plans. Despite what others may have told you, it is a very exclusive offer. One excludes the other. Or as Jesus says in today's gospel lesson, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So the question is, which plan are you adopting for yourself? There are only two plans available. All mankind will be covered under one or the other. Unlike Obamacare, there is no debate about this. Let me ask you, 
How are you making investments now with the things that God has entrusted you? What is reflected in your stewardship of the blessings that God has given to you? That is, by the way, the, the clearest indicator of the spiritual retirement plan that you have adopted for yourself, the clearest indicator will always be how you're living your life right now. The plan we have chosen is shown by how we make our investments in this life, in the here and now. So what does your spiritual portfolio look like? Those on the money plan invest everything in gratifying their passions and lusts, caring little, if anything, about the life to come. God always takes a back seat to other things or other people in terms of how they spend their time and money. Their primary concern in this life is their own happiness, which is something that they are unwilling to sacrifice for the sake of others. Now, don't misunderstand me. It is not that these people on this planet don't believe in God, or even that they don't believe in heaven or hell. It's just that they don't think about these things very much. They intend to get around to dealing with such spiritual matters. But unfortunately, most of them never do. Life comes and goes, and before you know it, it's too late. In our text, Jesus warns about investing our life in the money plan. He says that if a person can't be trusted with the little things, if they can't properly use their earthly possessions and talents, how can they be trusted with eternal matters? The point of the whole parable of the shrewd manager is that we Christians should learn to use the same kind of ingenuity and care in investing for our eternal future, just like the manager in our gospel lesson did. The things he gave away in recalculating bills weren't his to begin with. He was just managing them. And maybe he did lose a bit of his commission in the process, but it paid off greater benefits in the end. We can apply this parable to ourselves in this way. The things that we have in this life, the time, the talents, the treasures, they don't really belong to us. They were given to us by God. He has given them to us to be used faithfully. As the English pastor William Graham Scroggie once wrote, there are two ways in which a Christian may view his money. How much of my money shall I use for God? Or, how much of God's money shall I use for myself? Think of it this way. In the end, all that we are and have will return to God. So it follows that we should use our material blessings, our opportunities, our talents to God's glory and the benefit of others. Invest your time, your money, your talents, and your prayers to support Christ's church. As I said last week, it is the reason God has placed us in this world in the first place, to fulfill not our desires, His desires, His mission. We should use the love that God gives us. Use it especially in the families in which He has placed us. And as we do so, all of this, we let the world know. We let the world know which spiritual retirement plan is ours. We live our lives on the gospel plan, our good works produced by the Holy Spirit living within us, our evidence of a living faith. They reveal a wise investment strategy. Such a life will someday be graciously rewarded by the Savior himself, who will say to you and to me, well done, good and faithful servant. Wise investors re-examine their list of investments on a regular basis to make sure that they are getting the best results from their efforts. When was the last time you examined your spiritual investments? May the Lord strengthen our faith in his precious gospel plan so that we become and remain wise investors who place all our trust in Jesus Christ and his redemption and then go on to invest our God-given blessings to his service and his glory. Amen.
Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, may keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time we continue with the gathering of our offerings. We may be seated. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. <coughs>
Well, we certainly want to welcome all of you here to Mass House today. If you happen to be a guest or a visitor, a special welcome to you. We're glad that you're with us. And hope that you will come and worship with us again. As far as announcements go, uh, really just the stuff from the bulletin. And there is uh, there are sheets on the back as you leave. If you are a, a Valley alumnus, if you are a um, Valley family alumnus, if you're just interested in maybe going to the homecoming game in the Valley, there's some information we want to get together and have a party beforehand. Uh, we'll tailgate action, so you can find out more about that on the sheets in the back as you leave. Otherwise, I commend you reading the bulletin and with the calendar. And now we are in for a special treat. The Stephen Ministry players are here. We were going to get Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise. Unfortunately, we got Kevin Virgil. But uh, they're going to share with us a little uh, message this morning. Just to kind of keep Stephen Ministry, we, uh, you know, we keep it always in our minds. I hope that you're always thinking about it and from time to time you pray for it and the success of this. Uh, the Christian Caregiver Ministry in our midst. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning. Uh, this morning, Ken and I will be doing a short skit, and I, the only thing I ask you to do is use your imagination, <laughs> because you have to imagine there's coffee here, you have to imagine that there's, um, Ken and I are co-workers at a local business, um, I think we should be executives at Dow, <laughs> and most of all, you have to imagine that Ken and I can act. <laughs> the setup here is uh, we're in, I'm in the coffee room, the break room, getting ready to pour myself a cup of coffee. I love coffee. coffee. Oh, sugar. Oh, more sugar. sugar. Oh, I have to put some sweet in there. Nothing like a little sugar in my coffee. Cup number six. I know what to do. 
Hey, Tom, I was just thinking about your struggles. I have an idea that I'd just like to work for you. What's that? Is that the bourbon? <laughs> no, no, I don't think that would help. As a matter of fact, it might make it worse. You said it's a long story. That would be difficult to tell me. Would it be easier to tell someone that would care about you, but you wouldn't have to feel self-conscious or embarrassed? Well, yeah, but who would that be? Some shrink? No, nothing like that. Our church has a group of people who have been trained to listen and walk with someone through their painful times. They will listen to you without trying to fix things and without judging you. And it's absolutely confidential. Yeah, but I don't go to your church, Brad, and I don't even care much about church things. Yeah, I know that, Tom, but that's okay. You don't have to belong to the church to have someone care about you. And that's the focus of these people. They care about you. They have been gifted by God with the ability to care and listen and have a compassion for people. I care about you as well, but I haven't had near the training or the self-discipline. I tried to solve your problems for you, and that may not be what you need. It's a ministry of our church for anyone who is hurting or struggling with life or relationships. It's called the Stephen Ministry. Well, how does it work? Well, I'm glad you asked. And all I have to do is get the number three to call and speak to one of our referrals, Blue Gina or Leandra, and they'll match you up with a Stephen minister. Then the two of you can meet for a cup of coffee or something and begin to talk about your issues. Is that simple? Yes, it's that simple. I bet you're wondering how much it costs. Yeah, what's it cost? <laughs> Maybe they can help. 